Hello, Internet. Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. And thus the stage is set for climb to the top of the castle. This game comes to us from Two Bros Games, and yes, as you might imagine, that is a studio made up of two male siblings. Climb to the top of the castle currently retails for the very attractive price of zero dollars on Indievania.com. Full disclosure, back in the frozen days of February 2012, I did pay real actual money for this game. So that might lead you to ask, Big Dave, don't you feel slighted, ripped off, cheated? That a game you once paid real money for is now available to us, the unwashed masses, for absolutely free? And my answer to that is an emphatic no. I'm not the sort of person that thinks that if I pay money for something and it ever reduces in price, I am entitled to the difference. Fact of the matter is, video game consoles go down in price, WoW dual spec goes down in price, and yes, climb to the top of the castle goes down in price. It happens. So here's a bit of our uh, fail state. What would happen if we didn't complete our mission? Well, we'd end up here in that empty cell beside this knight rotting in the dungeon of this castle. So we want to complete our mission. Our mission again? What is it? Oh yeah, it's to climb to the top of the castle. How are we going to do that? We're going to do that with old school platforming mechanics. We're going to jump on things. We're going to hang from things. We're going to cling to things. Occasionally we might do a wall jump. And sometimes we will even smash things with our mighty sword. So that's all of the mechanics of good old school platformers ticked off right there in the first few seconds. Absolutely wonderful. But if you're still not sold, we'll just take a look about. Look at these great hand-drawn graphics. Absolutely love them. Not a lot of games these days rolling with these fully hand-drawn graphics like this. And I have to say, it's pretty impressive. Uh, I do have one small issue, and this is a great place to demonstrate that. In front of my knight, you will see two crates. One is in the background, behind me now. The other is in the foreground, behind me now. The crate that's in the foreground is screaming out to be smashed. Why is that? Well... Mechanically, it's because, look at it, it's lighter than its surroundings, it's not being affected by the shadow that's being cast on the wall, and if you look at it, there's a sort of a slight dark outline around it, and that is, uh, that is a sign to me, it touches a piece of my brain which is not even conscious, that this is something I can interact with, and that's just something that's been established in my head through platformers for the last 20 years. The crate in the background, it's casting a shadow. It's dull brown like the rest of the background. It blends in. It's not significant in any way. Yet, I can jump on it. It's a little bit weird. I mean, it's not majorly game-breaking. It doesn't affect too much. But there are instances in the game where it's difficult to tell what you're supposed to interact with. Or, in fact, what you can interact with. And that's just one little thing. If I had to give a demerit to this game at all, that's the one thing I would I would sort of pick out. You know, the backgrounds could be a little bit more separated from the objects which you can interact with, or the objects could be more separated from the background. Either way, you'd want to handle it. Uh, a game that really did this well is one of the first major platformers that most of us have, have played. That's Super Mario Brothers. Think about World 1-1. Bright blue sky background orange bricks. Very obvious that you can interact with those objects. World 1-2 black background, blue bricks. Again, very obvious that that's something you want to interact with. 
And that's a lesson that this game could kind of learn. But it's a small thing, it's not something I'm going to harp on. If I had to give you a negative, that's the negative that I had to give. That's the one I chose. And that's one of the only ones that I really have encountered thus far. So yeah, a bit nitpicky, but hey, whatever. Nice stat screen here at the end. Love that. Earned a couple of extra men. Always love extra men. So a quick bit on the controls. The controls are... Uh, they're fine for a PC game. They are uh, the arrow keys, the cursor keys, if you will, and the X and Z keys. This is something that a lot of people will be accustomed to uh, from Flash games. You know, a lot of Flash games use that because they only have the ability to rely on the keyboard. Uh, so it's, it's a good control scheme. It's not uh, perfect. I didn't notice controller support, though it might exist. Uh, I have no problems with the controls. I think they work well, and that's the most important part to me. So, let's grab the skull here, skull in a helmet, and then let's take a look at this fantastic contraption. Look at this. If this is not a trope of the platforming genre, I don't know what is. It is a conveyor belt that is running against you, objects that you have to jump over, and enemies that are falling down from the ceiling. Oh, I mean, this is Jungle Hunt. This is Adventure Island. This is so many platform games that you played as a kid, or I played as a kid. You may have played them. You may have played them as a kid too, but I played them when they first came out and I was a kid, so always remember guys, I am old. But man, that just puts a smile on my face, honestly and seriously, because it shows that this game gets it. It understands what it is and it understands where it's coming from. And it also understands what the audience who would play this game expects to see. Oh man, hack and slash there for a moment. And I really respect that. I respect that these guys, the two bros, uh, that they took the time to, to include things like that. I mean, you know, that is a contrivance, right? If you look at that, it is, it's a conveyor belt that's pooping, you know, pieces of metal that are then falling. But it works as a platforming thing, as, as a platforming gimmick. And I absolutely love it. And this is a nice little background here with the robots being, uh, being moved about and the, the hot molten liquid metal being poured. And, you know, you can tell that somebody's up to no good here. They are making these sort of clockwork robot machines. And uh, you know that you're going to see many, many more of them as your adventures continue forward. So let's finish this level up and head on. I'm not going to play too much of this game for you because, frankly, the game uh, speaks for itself. And it's free, so you need to play it. Nice. Just barely made that. We'll drop the ladder down, and we will get out of here. Let's go. Smash these birds. Die, birds. And let's get whoa, out of this level. There we go. Just like that. So again, we get our score screen, uh, letting us know that we we really didn't achieve the target time at all. Uh, but uh, we did get 100% on our enemies and objects destroyed, and we found our hidden items, so that, that earned us an additional life. Love it. So we're going to head out of the dungeon now and onto the castle walls. We're going to encounter some new enemies, and that will give me a nice opportunity to tell you folks a story. Let me tell you a story about 2B Games. 2B Games. If you've never heard of 2B Games, 2B Games is, a, or was, a gaming competition. There were two instances of this competition. The first one was won by the game that you might be familiar with, Auditorium. And uh, you may be familiar with it because of its recent kickstarting of a sequel, Auditorium 2. But the second competition was won by Climb to the Top of the Castle. That's right, this is an award-winning game. So, 2B Games no longer exists. Well, it sort of does, but it's not 2B Games. Uh, 2B Games now is called Indie Pub, and it still holds contests and focuses on getting independent developers the chance to have their games published in wider release. But when uh, they won the contest, when uh, the two bros won the contest, they ended up with uh, $10,000 in their pocket and the opportunity to get their game in front of some uh, publishers and distributors. Uh, it doesn't look like anything ever really came of that. It appears that they self-published onto digital distribution platforms. Uh, but still, that's a pretty big accomplishment for what I can, as far as I can tell, is their first game. So big thumbs up to the two bros there. Uh, IndiePub's still around. They've recently published uh, the game Vessel, 
which uh, you may know of that liquid uh, liquid squirting game where you play as a uh, as a steampunk workman who is uh, trying to kill all of the little or uh, round up all of his little creations, his little liquid man. I forget what they're called, uh, but a lot of people really enjoyed that game, and uh, with good reason. It was it was a damn good game. Um, I managed to play the demo, but never did get to play the uh, whole game. Still waiting on that game to go on sale for a good Big Davis cheap type price. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to be quiet for a second here because this thing's trying to kill me. All right, there we go. Wonderful. So yeah, big congratulations to the two bros for winning that contest. I hope to see more from them. Uh, at the current moment, they don't seem to be indicating on their website that they're working on anything new. Uh, but hey, you know what? They have put out one really interesting... Wow. They've put out one really interesting game so far, and I'm looking forward to seeing more from them. So, I really don't think there's a lot more to say about this game. I think you guys just need to play it. So, please go to Induvania.com, download this title for free. I do highly recommend it. I've had a lot of fun playing this game. It is a good diversion and distraction, and it really, really delivers on its old-school platforming promise. So, anything more to cover? So, after a few more minutes of play, I did find something else to cover. It's this. Believe it or not... There is a platformer inside of this platformer. Here's the machine right here. Let's take it for a spin. King's Creed, a fistful of coins. Here we go. Check this out. It is an old school platformer inside of your old school platformer. You're the king in this case. You're hopping about and you have basically the same, basically the same actions as before. You can jump. You can smash things, and you can platform. Wow. I mean, what a great thing for them to just include within this game. And it is just it is just hitting all of the retro aesthetics perfectly here. You know, instead of emulating an old-school platformer, this is an old-school platformer. Oh, look at this thing. Just wonderful. All right, guys, if before you didn't have enough reasons to play Climb to the Top of the Castle, let King's Creed be just one more reason. Uh-oh. All right, guys. I have been Big Dave. This has been Climb to the Top of the Castle. And until next time, take it easy.